Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have another pen here for review, and this you will see is a Leonardo Officina Italiana. Now I want to say Memento Zero, but no, it's the Cuspid, uh, the Pistoni Vintage. And uh, I always, at start off, when I heard this name, I wanted to call it the Cup Side, like many others uh, it's not the cup side it's the cuspid or cuspide so let's unbox this but the reason why it's called a cuspide is because of this and this is what the material of the pen is designed to look like a cuspid so let's unbox this by removing this sleeve and then you have a, a Leonardo Officina Italiana box here, a black box. And if I remove this, you will see another box inside it. And if I open this box, you will see a Leonardo Officina Italiana Cuspid Pistoni Vintage. Now, I will show you just a few things here. So you've got the Cuspid, and you have information about Leonardo, Officina Italiana here, and the laboratory where they make their pens. Now, these are the Cuspids, and you can get them in four colors. Now, these are already sold out, uh, unfortunately. So these went very, very quickly and a lot of people managed to get hold of these now this is on loan to me from john at stjohnspens.com so i'd like to thank john for the loan of this pen for review now the cuspid piston with a vintage taste shapes and details that recall the masterpieces of the 30s golden years for the italian fountain pen known throughout the world the filling system classic piston the ebonite feeder, the clip, the band, and also the position of the thin metal rings on the cap bring us back in time. There are four different colours, limited to 70 pieces for each nuance. So 70 colours for, and uh, oh, sorry, 70 pieces for four different colours, so 70 each. And there you can see the colours again. And... This gives you a little bit more detail about the pen. So a vintage piston, capacity 1.3 millilitres of ink. And you have some instructions there and warranty as well. So I'll just put that to one side. You also get a bottle of ink and this ink is a black ink. I'm not going to open that ink up because this pen is going back to John. And then you have the pen here, and you do have a little bit of cloth, uh, which uh, some say is a polishing cloth. Um, I don't really know if that's true or not, uh, but it's, uh, it's, it's a nice touch, I guess. And then you have the pen, and this is the pen. So you get variations of this material in the cuspid. But this is really supposed to look a little bit more like Arco material. Uh, the arco celluloid that we're sort of aware of from the 1920s and 1930s the kind of material that you would see on omas pens now if i show you this here you can see there's a lot of chatoyance there going on in that material and you do get like that cuspy type sort of almost like sort of spear point going on there and then you can see the layers here where this res it is resin, it's not celluloid, has been layered together and then cut at an angle. And then you can see here, like that spear that will go on and then another one here. So it's very, very much like Arco material, but it is a resin. Now, the cap finial is just blank. You can see the layering there, though. And you have an Italian-style roller clip and this is functional and the cap here at the cap finial it tapers in quite a lot it tapers out here to what is three bands so you have 
a very thin band, then you have this very detailed engraved band, and then you have another thin band, and then you have obviously the material where the cap drops off. Now, in terms of the body, it starts to taper out a little bit more to this sort of band here, which also is engraved. And then you have the piston filling knob. And yes, it is a piston, as I mentioned before. If I unscrew the cap, you will see here a lovely nib. It's a 14 cap Leonardo nib. And you can see there that it is a fine nib. And this is a, I believe, a Yovo nib. So if I just have a look at that, you'll see there that the 14, the K and the 14 carat is in a serif font. And that's the easiest way, I believe, to tell if this is a Yovo nib or a Bok nib because a Bok nib would just be a standard sort of font and not a serif font. So the nib, you can see there, it has this contour, a very nice contour. It's a very long nib, I have to say. I don't normally see nibs this long. And you can see the ebonite feed there. Now on the section, this is a prototype. And you can see there, Proto 00. zero. The section flutes out towards the end to stop your fingers getting onto that nib and feed. Uh, the section starts to taper out a bit and then you have these metal rings and then the rest of the body sort of tapers back out. It gets to about here where it gets a little bit more wider and then it starts to taper back down again. But this is a really nice pen. I. I have to say, I did look at these and I was very tempted to pick up a Cuspeed. Um, I would have preferred, though, that this material was in uh, with a steel nib and not a 14 karat gold nib. Uh, the 14 karat gold nib did bump the price up quite a lot. So I think we were looking around about £800 plus um, when these came out. Uh, so they are not cheap. Uh, pens uh, but it does have a 14 karat gold nib and this material really is quite nice and you can see that here that the amount of chatoyance that you get on this material is really really beautiful and you can see the layering there of that material and how it's been shaved or cut it really is nice now can I post this cap I can and it posts quite securely and deeply and it does make this pen quite long, but it doesn't actually add any weight to the back of the pen, really, because it does post quite deeply. I'm not normally a cap poster, though, so it's, to be honest, not something that I normally would do. But just look at this material. This material is very, very lovely there. So I think Leonardo are really onto something. Uh, Leonardo uh, are Salvatore and Chiro Matroni. Uh, they uh, used to operate Delta. Uh, Chiro was the founder of Delta before Delta went under, and then they broke away and created Leonardo Officina Italiana. And they are really cracking out some really, really nice pens. So for me, this is a great pen. Uh, I think with that, let's do a size check. We'll do a weight check. We'll do a pen comparison, and then we'll do a writing sample. So the full length of the pen, we are looking at 148 millimeters in length. The length of the cap is 71 millimeters in length. And then the length of the body to the tip of the tines, we're looking at 135 millimeters. So this is an oversized length pen. So the weight of the pen, and this is uninked, we are looking at 30 grams in weight. Exactly. You couldn't actually get that any better. 
the weight of the cap, we are looking at just over 10 and a half grams. So it's fairly lightweight cap. And then the weight of the body is just over 16 and a half grams. So the weight of that cap actually is the reason why I'm not actually feeling the pen being back weighted when I try to post the cap. So if I try to post the cap here, I post it, it really is light enough that it's not adding any weight to pull the pen backwards. So for me, I think that is great. The pen really feels nice in the hand. I love this section here. It's, it's, it feels just right. The only issue they do have on these pens is they do have multi-thread, so you do you can't always line it up the first time, and that's just something you need to play around with. So I think with that, let's go and do a comparison with other pens. So from left to right, we have a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog, a Montegrappa Extra 1930 Shiny Lines Dove. We have a Visconti Watermark. We have an Omas Milord in the Wild. We have an Omas Arte Italiana Paragon Grande in the Arco Brown. We have a Leonardo Cuspeed. We have an Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra, and this is the Arco Brown. We have an Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Arco Verde. We have a Visconti St. Basil, and we have a Visconti Opera Master Luna. So I think with that, let's go and do a writing sample. So this is the Leonardo. And it's the Cuspeed. Now, this is a fine nib, and I would say that that is giving me a fine line. Uh, it's a 14 cat gold nib. And the ink in here today is Diamine Earl Grey, which I think matches the grey of this pen quite nicely. Now, in terms of line variation, this really is providing a 14 cat, sorry, a 14 cat, a fine line. And if I press a little bit harder, I can get a little bit more line variation out of it, but not a lot. Maybe double line variation. So this is not a flex nib in any way, shape or form. Uh, it doesn't have any wing cutouts on it either. But you can see there, there is no hard starts or skips whatsoever. Now, in terms of ink wetness, let's have a look. And we'll do the cross strokes, horizontal strokes. So this is quite a wet pen. It's not a fire hose nib though. And to be honest, I wouldn't really expect this of that pen. Now, I typically find the Leonardo pens uh, with the gold nibs to be a little bit more on the drier side. Now, this is the Yovo nib, not a Bock nib. Now, Leonardo used to use Bock nibs, and they are transitioning from Bock to Yovo. Now, my experience with Yovo nibs is that they tend to be Certainly the gold nibs tend to be a little bit on the hard side. So when I say hard side, they don't flex as much. But for me, I find that this writes well. There's a little bit of feedback to it. I think, to be honest, I do prefer the Bok gold nibs over the Yovo gold nibs. However, I do like Yovo steel nibs. Steel nibs tend to, they are very hard very rigid as well uh, but they do perform very well and I think that's one thing about Yovo is that there is a much greater consistency there on the nib widths and the wetness of the nibs. Now what do I like and what do I not like about this pen? Well I love the material, I absolutely love the material. Now I really wish I'd pick one of these up or a couple of these up or one in each color. Um, 
but this was not a cheap pen uh, for what is essentially a resin. So for me, I I kind of kicked myself that I didn't pick one up or several, but I know that I could have very easily gone overboard and at around about 800 possibly per pen. If I had bought four, then that's a lot of money. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't, but I kind of wish that I did pick one up. So for everyone that picked up a Cuspeed, congratulations. This is a really lovely material. Um, I like that it's a piston. I like that it holds around 1.3 millimeter, milliliters of ink. And uh, I like the design of the pen. I like the size. I like the weight. I like the girth. Everything about this pen speaks to me. Um, the only thing is, if I had the option, I'd probably go for a Bok Gold Nib. That's the only issue that I can personally find. That's my own personal preference, but that's the only thing that I would prefer on this pen. Outside of that, I don't see there's anything wrong with the pen. I don't see any flaws. Um, I know a few people have said that the, the cap here tends to be a little bit sharp. Um, now, yeah, I didn't think it was sharp, to be honest. I, it does feel a little bit, maybe. Um, it's not rounded off, so it's not sharp. It's not going to cut you, but it does feel a little bit, maybe, rough to the touch but outside of that there really isn't anything else i really do like this pen um i would like to thank john from stjohnspens.com for loaning me this pen for review if you haven't checked john out already go and check him out on instagram at st john's pens or check him out at stjohnspens.com john does go to all of the uk pen shows and a lot of the european pen shows however because of the coronavirus outbreak in 2020 through to 2021 we haven't been able to hold a lot of the the pen shows around the world so if you don't get a chance to check him out before then then do check him out on instagram or on his website at stjohnspens.com so that's my review of the leonardo cuspeed with a fine 14 karat gold yovo nib thanks for watching please like comment subscribe and i'll see you on the next pen video Bye-bye.